the electron spin uh, was crucial in explaining the fine structure of hydrogen spectra, which was line spectra. And uh, our Summerfield and Bohr Summerfield theory gave us a relativity correction, but it was not able to explain this fine structure component of the hydrogen spectra. The second drawback with the Bohr Summerfield theory was that. <clears throat> The quantum theory actually it failed to explain anomalous Zeeman effect, the simple quantum theory which was given by the Bohr summer field. So it does not have, it was not able to explain anomalous Zeeman effect. That is when the atomic spectral liners they split into four, six or more components when we shine some light source, when we take some light source and is placed in an external magnetic field. So in general, the interaction of external magnetic field. Interaction of external magnetic field. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. The interaction of external magnetic field with magnetic moment was unknown because this component was unknown spin magnetic moment to understand these drawbacks or to remove these drawbacks from the theory and in 1925 God Smith and Eulen Beek Back, they proposed an experiment and they proposed that an electron must be looked upon as a charged sphere. So electron must be seen as a charged sphere spinning about its own axis. So that means if I suppose I make it a charged sphere, this is an electron and it has an axis, for example, this has axis. So it spins about its own axis, this axis. When it spins about its own axis, since it's a charge, so it also acts as a magnetic dipole, as we saw in the case of orbital. So it has an intrinsic or built-in angular momentum, and that gives it <coughs> an intrinsic magnetic dipole moment. So we have then a spin motion of an electron, it gives spin magnetic moment or uh, that is called as intrinsic angular momentum <coughs> angular momentum and consequently an intrinsic magnetic dipole moment that is spin dipole moment spin magnetic dipole moment the spin angular momentum that is denoted by s capital s and the dipole moment spin dipole moment or spin magnetic dipole moment that is denoted by mu s and it's a vector quantity like we have in case of orbital l and we have then mu l so the terminology is almost analogs to each other the magnitude s this it is given by h cut or h by 2 pi this s is a spin quantum number spin quantum number s and it has a magnitude of 1 by 2 s is equal to 1 by 2 what this s is 1 by 2 is actually a it is a probability that an electron has either up spin or a down spin so when it is up so it has a half probability at any time t or really time t and they were able to find the s equal to 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1 h cut which is root 3 by 2 h by 2 h cut now if we apply some magnetic field for example this is a spinning spin vector s here and this is the electron 
yeah and we apply some magnetic field then this s since it's s is a the spinning vector about its axis so it can move here from somewhere from here then here then here it can be down as well some electrons can have spin which can be down as well when we apply some magnetic field suppose that in the z direction like we have lz in case of orbital magnetic moment we have lz and this s is given by ms h cut but ms is a spin magnetic quantum number that is the component of the spin in the direction of the magnetic field in the z direction z direction means direction of the magnetic field and that is given by as z is equal to ms h cut where ms is a spin magnetic quantum number quantum number and it takes 2s plus 1 values like we have in the case of 2l plus 1 values for l ml 2l plus 1 so s has only plus half and minus half so it can take us ms it has a from minus half to plus half as well and we can write then s z will be equal to minus 1 by 2 sorry h cut okay somebody wants to say something so please write a message or uh, if there is some audio issue please let me know so this is generally equal to two values plus half and minus half this gives us a two values when you put not this oh, sorry this is for l here two values okay So experiments have been done and theoretically as we have derived the expression from for the orbital g this gyromagnetic ratio for an electron for orbit electron in an orbit similarly we have a ratio of mu s by s and it is experimentally observed to be two that is the gyromagnetic ratio for the spin motion of electron for orbital motion it is one so but for <clears throat> spin motion it is twice corresponding to that mu l by l and if you see that mu s we can write minus two into two m into s as we have derived for mu l by l in the last lecture you can go on and derive this expression same way see mu l by l derivation for this and this 2 is for gs gs means the gyromagnetic ratio or the spin g factor and it is 2 for the electron when it has a spin angular momentum spin motion minus sign here again minus means negative sign gives us opposite directions of so s and mu s these are the vector quantities So GS is the spin G factor. <clears throat> now we can write it as mu S is equal to minus. I can write GS. It is E by 2M into S here. I can also write it as this minus GS. I can write uh, it is mu B by h by 2 pi into s yes 
So this is how we can write it as mu s is equal to minus g s mu b by h cut. H by 2 pi is H cut. This is one expression in terms of Bohr magneton. But mu b is the Bohr magneton. And mu b is equal to actually E h by 4 pi m, which is Bohr magneton. Now, if you apply field and found the Z component of the magnetic moment mu s z along the z axis, what is the latest value? It is actually equal to minus g s mu b divided by sorry h cut into s z. Then we are taking the s spin magnet spin magnetic moment in the z direction, and I can write it as it is minus g s mu b ms h cut divided by h cut because sz is ms h cut and this h cut and this h cut will cancel it is minus gs mu b ms is the magnetic moment in the z direction spin magnetic moment now you can put up the values gs equal to 2 and ms is equal to plus minus one by half then you will find that mu sz will be plus minus mu b when you put up gs equal to two here and ms equal to plus minus half so plus minus half will come plus minus will come out here and one by two will remain two and two will cancel out it will plus minus mu b So then we will show this study the stern girlish experiment where they have experimentally verified the existence of the spin this property spin property of an electron that we will see later on in the next lecture now before that the total what will be the total angular momentum and hence total magnetic moment of an atom <clears throat> when i talk of atom i am leaving the nucleus i am not talking about the nucleus i am only talking about the electrons and only electrons because in atomic physics part we will only deal with the atoms and electrons not with the nucleus in the later part when we discuss some techniques like nuclear magnetic resistance and in that technique, we will see some contribution from the nucleus as well. Or we, when we discuss the fine structure and hyperfine structure, then some interactions will be there. But when I calculate the total angular momentum, in angular momentum or the magnetic moment of the atom, we are talking about the electrons. So the total we know that we have L orbital part, that is L into L plus one into H cut here. We have Lz equal to Z component when we apply the magnetic field. Z means when we are applying magnetic field is the Z component of the L actually. And this L is the orbital quantum number. Where ML is the magnetic quantum number. We know that ML has values L, L minus one through zero through L minus L plus one up to minus L. From minus plus L to minus L through zero. And similarly, for the case of spin, S is equal to under root of H cut, it is Z component will be SZ MS H cut, <coughs> where we know that MS will be plus minus R, It is plus minus s actually small s quantum number spin quantum number whereas this is a spin quantum number okay then the total angular momentum j j will be the vector addition of l plus s 
uh, vector addition. And similarly, we can write then j, then the total ang angular moment quantum number is j equal j small j, where we can write capital J is equal to under root of j into j plus one h cat. And this resultant angular momentum vector j, which is a vector addition of L plus s, has an, also the z component because we are applying the external magnetic field and the total resultant magnetic moment will have an effect because of that magnetic field and the component of the j's will be jz that is mj h cut j is actually also called as the total quantum number or the inner quantum number and mj is a corresponding magnetic quantum number mj similarly like ml ms mj has the values j j minus one through zero to minus j minus one up to plus j and uh, to minus j sorry up to minus j, this is j. Similarly, as we have j equal to L plus s, we have jz will be equal to Lz plus sz. And mj will be equal to ml plus minus ms. Here it is plus minus because s has plus half and minus half, s, small s. We know that ms is half, ml is integer. What will be mj? It is half integer. Half integer. Half, half integer. integral. Half integral. Good. And <coughs> the j, it will be l plus minus s. Similar, like in the earlier case, we know that the maximum values for any m, j, m, l, and m, s, they are j, l, and s, small j, quantum numbers. And like m, j, j also half integral. Because of that half s z, as well as m, s. s is half, m, s is also half. s, when I talk s is half, it is small s not the capital S, capital S is the resultant. Now, so it is a vector addition. I can write that J is not always actually equal to, it is L plus minus S. So J will be L plus S implies J, capital J is greater than L. In this case, J will be L plus S. So capital J is greater than L. That means S is smaller than L. J is L minus S, it gives J is less than L. How to represent it vectorically? It is simply the matter of an angle between L and S. For example, if this is L and this is S, the angle is greater than 90, it is obtuse angle. So it is always J equal to L plus S here. J. Not dot there is no dot is a capital j it's a vector so this angle is actually greater than 90 so if it is smaller like this it is l and it is s then this is j this is j equal to small j equal to l minus s which is one by two is for l equal to one when l equal to one and s equal to half so for this case j will be l plus s that is three by two that is simple case how we draw vectorically <clears throat> the coupling this is called ls coupling actually simply how we couple the uh, orbital and the <clears throat> spin angular momentum spin angular moment of an electron of an atom <clears throat> Now, what does this J do when we apply the magnetic field? How to represent in an atom? For example, we know that I have already one of the diagrams in the earlier in the beginning of this lecture. If, for example, 
this is an atom sorry no oh, sorry if this is an atom and there's some electrons which are moving like this here <coughs> not the electron electron has electron is moving and it has a spin vector like this this is s for example it has an s vector here s is the resultant of the atom not the single electron i am taking s capital which is resultant that is the sum of the, all the electrons s capital s and if it has an l like this then we have already this is l and then how you find it you find draw this parallelogram law of vectors okay and this is the s because s will move electron will move here this in this path this will form a this cone and this is l so l will form it a separate wait sorry this so this is l here so when this l will process around this j actually here is the j is a resultant because from parallelogram law vectors this is how you calculate the j actually resultant vector in this case and this is the motion of l precision direction of the l actually <coughs> so if you have l so this is a magnetic nature s that is a magnetic nature so if l and s will interact the interaction will be magnetic interaction actually so it will be magnetic interaction magnetic. when it is a magnetic interaction this is also called as spin orbit interaction it's also called as spin orbit interaction since there is a magnetic so orbital magnetic moment will exert a magnetic interactive effect on the spin magnetic moment so it will be seen as a dipole in an external field that means the spin magnetic dipole will be in the field of orbital magnetic dipole similarly the orbital so okay what i am saying is that since spin has a magnetic moment so it has a magnetic effect likewise has an orbital magnetic moment so if you treat them independently independently means that when we have an spin magnetic dipole because magnetic moment arises when there is a magnetic dipole so this spin magnetic dipole will be under the influence of the orbital magnetic moment because orbital magnetic moment means the strength of that dipole so it has a magnetic effect on the another dipole okay likewise the spin magnetic moment has a dipole effect magnetic moment effect on the orbital magnetic dipole are you able to understand it one is mu s one is mu z sorry mu l okay dipole moment of the spin magnetic moment and dipole moment for the that so orbital dipole magnetic dipole in both the cases we are treating the electron that to be as a dipole then is that is how we got the magnetic dipole moments okay so this mu s will interact with mu l likewise the mu l will interact with mu s in both the cases we can see one dipole under the influence of the magnetic field from the other dipole yes sir samajh pa rahe similarly spin can be seen yes, the under, under the magnetic field effect of the orbital and orbital can be seen from the magnetic effect of the spin and what will do these these will exert Why? these will exert torques on each other these will exert torques on each other but these internal torques they do not change the magnitude of the vectors l and s likewise we have seen in the earlier cases the external magnetic field b does not change the magnitude of the l but what it does it exerts a torque on the l and it changes its direction when it changes its direction the l will process around b that lz in the last lecture just remember that picture yes sir 
Similarly here, in this case, when we have mu S and mu L, they exert torque on each other, S and L. So S and L will not change their magnitude. There will be no change in the magnitude, but there will be change in the direction of S and L because of those torques of each other. So the direction will change. That means they will persist that cone, likewise in the earlier case here, this and this, as we have mm -hmm. seen in the earlier case. And when we talked ab about only about L, but here we have both L and S, so they will persist around both around the J, the resultant magnetic dipole moment, resultant magnetic moment vector. Okay, so the both will persist around J. Now, we know that, did you got it? If someone has any confusion, please let yes, me know. Yes, so we have J equal to L plus S. This is a vector. J is vector, L is vector, S is vector. So it's a vector addition. If I have to take J square, it is J dot J. It is L plus S dot L plus S. We can write it as this is J square cos theta. But it is J, so cos zero cos is theta is zero, so it is J square only. Okay. It is L square. I can write it is A plus B into A plus B. It is not in a scalar product A plus, it is a dot product. So in dot product, you know that how we write it. It is L square plus S square plus two L S into cos of theta. It is cos between L and S. You can simply L dot L. S dot L, L dot S, S dot S. That is how we take this scalar product, this dot product. Okay, then L dot L is L square and cos of L theta. Theta is zero actually, so it is one like in J here. S dot S is S square, but theta is zero, so it is S square cos theta cos zero is one, so that is simply S here, this. Then it is L dot S is equal to S dot L in the dot product. But in cross product, it is minus, but in dot product, it is L dot S is equal to S dot L. So that is how it got to L cos theta. Yes, sir. So, so it can, we can write it as J square is equal to L square plus S square plus 2LS into cos of L comma S. You can find the vector between L and theta between L and S angle. At what angle L and S are oriented with each other? Now, I can write it as J square minus L square minus S square is equal to two L S cos of L comma S. Or I can write it as cos of L S is equal to J square minus L square minus S square divided by two L S. I put up the values of J, L and S. That is equal to J into J plus one H cut, okay, minus L into L plus one H cut, because there is a square, so I am removing the root, minus S into S plus one H cut, divided by two under root of L into L plus one. There is an H cut here, here it is S into S plus one, here is again an H cut, okay? So one H cut will come, come out of these terms, here, 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 and it will cancel out from one, Sorry, it is H square actually, H cut square. Because there is a square, H cut is not in the root, it is outside the root. So it will be H cut square. So that square and this H cut and H cut will cancel out here. So we are left with J into J plus one minus L into L plus one minus S into S plus one divided by two. L into L plus one into under root of S into S plus one. So this is how you can find cos of ls this is one of the important results so this is called a vector atom model vector model of an electron one electron atom vector model so you can accident in many electrons and uh, it enables us to explain actually the different phenomena like uh, which cannot be understood from Bohr's summer field theory 
like fine structure of spectral lines anomalous gmn effect because of the existence of that spin component and uh, one of the when uh, one of the important conclusion you can draw that what happens when you place atom in an external magnetic field we have studied it earlier but we have not considered the contribution of the spin magnetic moment at that time so at in this case if you see the notes which i have sent to you i am not able to show it here on the pc but <clears throat> if for example you have an electron which is has a um, path like this and there is an atom you have a spin s here you have an l like this which is passing through the center l then there is a j like this sorry j okay and this j will this l will process around the j okay here and if you apply magnetic field to this atom if you apply in the z direction if you apply the magnetic field in the z direction here sorry here it is b i am making the different orientation of l and s to just to differentiate the quantities physical quantities so if i am applying the b in this direction the b z here and we know that s and l will process around j so this is actually j this this vector is j and it will actually form a cone here that Sorry, it will just pass through the center actually. This J will pass through the center of this because this J is actually the L will process around this J, this L, L and S. Here S will process around J. Both are processing around J actually. Here this is the S, this is the L, so they will process around. But this J, what will J do? It will process around this B. This, this is J, here. This is J, so it will process like in like the case of L in the last level what we have seen in the last lecture. So this J will process around the B and will form a separate cone. Just try to understand this figure pictor uh, pictorically, and if I'm not here good in this picture, you can try to draw it again by your own hands. I have sent you the notes. So it is important to remember, just important, that when we apply an external magnetic field to the atom, the orbital angular momentum L and the S spin angular momentum, they both will process around J, what we have seen in the earlier case, just before this. And the J, which is a resultant of L and S, it will process around B in the plane, okay? And this is how we treat the atom in an external magnetic field. And we also know that like electrons, nuclei also have smaller intrinsic spin angular moment and magnetic moment. And hyperfine structure is the resultant of that uh, nuclear magnetic moment. Okay, and we will study more about this when we apply, when we study Zeeman effect and fine structure, hyperfine structure. I think it is enough for today. <clears throat>